Okay, welcome everyone to this continuation of what is algebraic geometry. Today I would like to tell you about ice cream, um, a lot of ice cream. Uh, why would I like to tell you about ice cream? Well, do I need a reason to talk about ice cream? Well, maybe it will be in disguise of a cone. Um, and the cone in algebraic geometry will mostly look like this while uh, ice cream cone usually looks like this. So if, if your ice cream cone looks like this, then something went wrong. But anyway, we'll talk about kind of ice cream cones if you want. And the point why I would like to do this is I would like to sell you the idea that projective, projective always sounds very scary and I postponed it quite a, quite a bit down in this lecture series, but it's actually really easy. So projective things are actually easy and um, yeah, cones give you a really nice perspective on why projective is, is easy. But let's get started. Let's get started easily, right? So a cone in algebraic geometry is usually what people call um, a double cone. So if you Google double cone, so let's, uh, let's actually try that. So double cone, double, can I spell double? We'll see, double cone. And you click on images. I did that before. Let me zoom in a little bit here. So when you click on images, you will find the double cone I'm talking about here, this one here. But you want to find this guy. So when, has everyone ever seen this type of double cone? Um, that's not what I'm talking about, but apparently they exist as well. So I'm talking about this type of double cone, which is the kind of a standard one in algebraic geometry. And you see in a second actually why. So just keep in mind, if an algebraic geometer talks about a cone, it's usually what other people call uh, a double cone. And the fact I would like to address here that every projective variety is a cone. It sounds a bit strange, but we'll see um, actually what that means. Okay. And by the, what it's a cone by definition in algebraic geometry is the following. It's an affine variety. Yeah, so just a zero set of our little polynomial friends. Yeah, sure. That's what we study in, in geometry, right? So in algebraic geometry, sure. But there is an extra condition and you can kind of ignore this part. So sure, it's centered around the origin, but ignore that. Uh, more important is that all the lines are in the cone. So whenever you have a vector in the cone, so this type of picture in mind. So whenever you have a vector in the cone, um, or the whole line through the vector is in the cone. And that's exactly why we have those types of uh, double cones, right? We want the the whole line inside of it, while whatever something like something like the whole line. Oh, this is a really awful picture. The whole line uh, around the vector lies in lies in of our little cone. And if I would have the the ice cream type cone, this one here, then it would be uh, not a line, but like the ray. Okay, fine. But we are like we like fields. We like to think about the real numbers, right? So let's say our round field is the real numbers, then we would have kind of both directions, right? the line in both directions. Yeah, so that's the definition of a cone. It's a little bit strange in the sense that a line, for example, itself is a cone, uh, but yeah, fine. It kind of makes sense from the viewpoint of algebraic geometry that this condition is like the, the really interesting and crucial condition you would add to your back of conditions, I guess. And yeah, that makes sense, right? So you just have all the lines in your cone. And why is that so important? Well, sure, you have all the lines in the cone, but why was I postponing this definition for such a long time? It's because now it plays very nicely with respect to projective geometry. And what do I mean by that? I mean the following. So um, in projective geometry, in contrast to affine geometry, you study homogeneous polynomials, right? Polynomials where everything has the same degree. Here are those beasts here, right? So x1 plus x2, for example, has the same degree, or here x1 squared, x1, x2, x2 squared. Something like that. You study polynomials that are homogeneous, while in affine geometry, you study any polynomial, essentially. So already projective geometry is a little bit of a subset of affine geometry, in some sense a subset of affine geometry. And a crucial example of a cone is just a vanishing set for homogeneous polynomials. And why is that? Well, because you have this funny equation that you can just write down, right? So if you have a homogeneous polynomial, f, and I usually 
uh, whatever, and, and you evaluate it on lambda times v, lambda is just a scalar, then this is just lambda to some power, and the power is just the degree of the polynomial, times f, uh, so this is equal to times f of v. And what does this imply? Well, this implies that if f of v is zero, right, we have a vanishing set here, this goes to zero, then this will go to zero. So we, we vanish on all the lines as well. So cones behave very, very nicely with respect to homogeneous polynomials. And projective varieties are defined, essentially defined using homogeneous polynomials. So here we have a nice relationship, already kind of, uh, and the relationship that kind of appears on the horizon at this point, between cones and projective varieties. And yes, so this is a really, really good uh, relationship in the following sense. So there's essentially, well, there's not essentially, there is a bijection between cones and projective varieties. So every projective variety comes from a cone, and every cone gives a projective variety. It's a really nice bijection. And the way it works is, well, the only little catch here is that usually if you go from affine to projective, you need to go from n plus 1 to n, because one of the coordinates will be used as a scalar, essentially. So it's kind of scale along the line. And the way this works is you just take the projectivization, which is very silly. You just write down instead of coordinates, you write down homogeneous coordinates, projective coordinates. And so you take a variety, so you take some cone and you can projectivize it, and you get a projective variety. And the inverse map is you can conify. I made up that word, I'm pretty sure that doesn't exist. You can conify um, a projective variety by just taking the prey image of this, well, the pi map, so the pi map is down here, and just at the zero again, the kind of you lose the zero. And this is a bijection between cones and projective varieties. And to me, this really, really says, kind of an interpretation, obviously, but to me, this really, really wants to say that projective geometry is somewhat easier from this perspective than affine geometry, because the projective varieties are kind of very special affine varieties, right? They're codes, like very special ones with nice properties. So essentially, you should think of projective is easier than affine. And indeed it is. Also, it takes you a longer time to understand the definitions because the definitions are a bit more involved. But for example, we saw this, um, that all the conic sections, which we always need to distinguish in affine geometry, they're all equal in projective geometry, right? So it makes it life much, much easier. They're all equal in projective geometry. And now we can think of kind of having a type of theorem, whatever, um, kind of a Pappus type theorem. Let me just pull up Pappus theorem. So Pap Oh, maybe I should do it like this. Pappus theorem, wonderful. Pappus theorem. So Pappus theorem, Pappus centroid theorem. Maybe let's zoom in a little bit. It's not what I'm looking for. So if you're famous, you know, a lot of theorems named after you. I'm looking about for Pappus hexagon theorem. Wonderful. Pappus hexagon theorem is this theorem about, um, well, you have those points and you connect them in type of a hexagon, so here's a hexagon, one, two, three, four, five, six, in this hexagon time pattern, and then there will be a line that goes through all the intersection points between the various type of hexagon objects, kind of a classical type of theorem, there exists something and whatever, in a certain configuration, you connect certain lines and you get an extra line, which is a little bit unexpected. And that's true in affine and projective geometry, the difficulty comes in affine geometry. Well, let me pull up the picture again. So here you have those lines. And in projective geometry, there's just lines and everything is fine. You can just state the theorem and everyone is happy. But in affine geometry, then you have these different cases, whether the lines are parallel, and then you draw lines down, which might be parallel. So you have a, 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 a zoo of case by cases, and the kind of the theorem looks a little bit nasty in affine geometry, while in projective geometry it's just smooth, smooth and clay. And yeah, and this is one reason why projective geometry uh, should be the easier geometry. And the other reason is like every projective variety is just a type of cone type picture. So I hope I didn't uh, bother you too much with projective varieties. I hope it's kind of clear that they are actually easier. It just uh, takes you a little bit of time to kind of get used to homogeneous coordinates. 
Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.